St. Paul was one of the safe cities in America. If you were a bank robber, a kidnapper, uh, an assassin, a mob hitman, there were a couple of cities that you would go to and you knew that the police wouldn't arrest you. Hot Springs, Arkansas, uh, Cicero, Illinois, which is where Al Capone used to hang out, and St. Paul, Minnesota. The fix was in. It was called the O'Connor system, named after the police chief, John O'Connor, at the turn of the century in St. Paul. The deal was, you, Mr. Bank Robber, are welcome to come to St. Paul. When you come to the railroad depot, you have to check in. You would uh, hand a bribe over to the police as a tribute, but you had to promise not to kill or rob or kidnap anyone within the city limits of St. Paul. Now you could go to Minneapolis and kill whoever you wanted to. You could go to Iowa and rob a bank. But when you came to St. Paul, you had to be on your best behavior. Well, every major criminal in America came to St. Paul. John Dillinger, the Barker Boys, Alvin Creepy Carpus, Bugsy Siegel, Machine Gun Kelly. So you would ask, where do they stay? When you read the FBI files, you'll see the FBI has a tip that they are staying on Summit Avenue at the corner of Summit and Dale. And you can still go to Summit and Dale and see this breathtaking apartment building, which is where two of the most notorious train robbers in America brought their girlfriends. So that's what's so fascinating to me is the baddest guys of the 1920s and 30s. The, the public enemies lived in Crocus, Ramsey Hill, on Grand Avenue, Dale, Edgecombe, all these familiar, beautiful neighborhoods. This is where the gangsters called home.